All right guys, so what you're going to need for this particular project is 10 cups of plaster of Paris, which you can find at your local hardware store. I got the last one they had of mine. The original project I was going to do required 20 cups of plaster of Paris, so you'll hear me mention the larger volumes in the video a couple times. But yeah, um, this costs six bucks, I think, for 10 cups of plaster of Paris. And then you're going to need 10 cups of play sand, which you can get at your hardware store also. Um, I think it cost me three bucks. Um, number 10 can, also known as a coffee can, cleaned. And then you're going to need something to make the cavity to put your crucible in. Shed, um, the garage. Um, got my number 10 can. Um, Remove the label from it. It's gonna finish up taking that off. And then I, uh, I've been keeping nails in it. You're probably not gonna, yeah, I guess you can see in there. So it's awfully nasty in there. And that won't affect what you're burning at all, but I'm fairly certain that it will affect the adherence of the plaster of Paris mixture that goes inside to line this because this is the wall of your kiln. And then the insulating wall goes right here. And what I'm gonna do is when I pour in, the plaster uh, it will be filled about to here which you'll see and then I'm going to take this solo cup and push it in so it makes a depression for me to put my crucible in so yeah I'm gonna get this cleaned up with my uh, I'm just gonna attach some steel wool to my drill clean that all up and then we'll cut back to the mixing a lot of people tend to put legs on these either having it sideways they have legs here or they put legs on the bottom so they can stand it up I'm not gonna waste my time with that not that it's a waste of time for other people you know they want to keep it up off the ground or whatever surface they've got it on but honestly there's a little bit of a lip to this which I feel will provide you know even just a slight bit of lift and I'm just gonna put it on some concrete blocks anyhow um, you should always make sure that you put it on a fireproof surface you know keep your torches away from all uh, <laughs> flammable materials because when you're using map gas for long periods of time, things will catch on fire if you're not careful. Um, always wear eye protection, which I actually kind of just forgot about because I was cleaning out the inside of this, the rust, as much as I could with the air compressor earlier and uh, got myself in the left eye, which luckily is my bad eye anyhow, but yeah, wear your glasses, make sure your work area is safe. I'm going to finish grinding off the rust here just because, you know, might as well attack it while we can. All right, so everything I'm looking at online says that uh, you need to have at least seven centimeters of insulating concrete here uh, where your, from where your core is to the back wall of the kiln. I'm gonna try to cheat because the solo cup only left me with about two and a half centimeters. I'm gonna try to cheat and uh, go with five centimeters is what's gonna be about left once this spray paint can is put into the middle to form the cavity and then what I'm gonna to try to do to use a crucible because I was going to try to use some kind of can or a solid solid piece of metal as a crucible or a cat piece of metal rather as a crucible I'm gonna to try to take a socket like a deep large socket and put a bead of metal in it to seal it up and use that as a crucible instead just until I can get my other one ordered online because my large one cracked because <laughs> I didn't bake it properly and cure it. So yeah, I'm gonna start mixing up the mix for this. We're gonna try to go, you know, five centimeters instead of seven. I mean, the worst thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna crack. And considering that we'll be keeping an eye on this the whole time that it's being used, um, you know, cracking won't be an issue. There'll be water nearby and, and different you know, implements to deal with fire or whatever may result from it. I wouldn't, I don't think it'll ever get up to, you know, a temperature where it's going to explode all of a sudden. So, yeah, I'll get back to you and uh, start mixing up that solution. Okay, so for this half recipe, we're actually using, um, we're using 10 cups of plaster of Paris and 10 and a half cups of play sand and seven and a half cups of water, which I've got pre-measured out into a jug here. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this all together. Once you, it's okay to get your uh, sand into your plaster of Paris right away, but uh, 
once you get the water in, I guess you've only got about 10 minutes to stir this before it starts to really set. So you want to get it stirred up as best you can and smooth so there's, you know, the smallest lumps possible. Get it poured into your can and then we'll move on to the next step of pressing the other can in to make the form. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut away while I measure this out just because I'm running low on battery life already. So we'll be right back. Sorry about that. So, this is what you want it to look like. And uh, if I can just get something to stir it up with here. It's not super thick, it's kind of soupy. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's going to take a few hours to, to, you know, settle once it starts setting very quickly, but to harden all the way, it's going to take a few hours. So let me get the camera set back up and then we'll uh, get it poured into the, what is going to be the kiln rather. Fill it about three quarters of the way full. And uh, you're going to have some leftovers, but we're going to hopefully use that to make a little lid and nail together a little form later and make a lid. And you want to take whatever you're making for the depression whether it's a solo cup or in this case a paint can and you want to try to center it up as best as possible and then just push it down almost to the bottom because you want to have some room I'm going to go to the bottom and then find where the bottom is and then just come up about five centimeters and then it's a matter of holding still for a few minutes Once you get your form to set, and I've got mine so the paint can's actually uh, just sitting there on its own now, so it's settled up a little bit. You want to move quickly because your mixture here is going to start to set. This had already started to set a little bit. It's already a little thicker. So, uh, yeah, I've got to move quick here. So, we're going to make a cover for the kiln now. You want to get a, something that's either bigger or approximately the same size of the coffee can so I'm just using a plastic coffee can here and you want to get yourself a u-bolt that'll focus up yeah you want to get yourself a u-bolt a lot of people like to use a cross member here just so it'll stand up well I'm just gonna set it in there on the edge and let it kind of be angled because mine's only gonna have one handle so I can pick it up with an angle iron or something like that um, but yeah I'm gonna go clean this out and then we'll pour the rest of our solution the leftover part of the batch into here with the u-bolt to make the lid so i'll be right back set that right there at a bit of an angle and that'll leave us free we're actually going to drill with a hole saw just a little tiny hole right there so we have a vent for the the pressure and the heat in the cover and also that way we can add material to the crucible as it's warming up instead of having to remove the cover every time yeah this stuff's really starting to set so i'm gonna stop talking and get to pour
Let that settle out. Let that form up for a few hours and then we'll get back to it.